All right. I'm excited. Are we live? Are we live? How's the, how's the audio? A little low. I think we'll go with it. I think we'll be fine. Anyway, welcome everybody. My name is Awakened Cloud. You can call me Awakened Cloud or whatever you feel like. And today, we are going to finish the right. We've been working on this game for a very long time. <laughs> it's a lot more reading than even I anticipated. Like, having played this game probably, I'd say four or five times to completion. It's like, oh, this is a doable thing I can do. No, like, talking for two hours straight, it's rough. But, that being said, we are on the last two phases of the game. We have one more investigation and one more trial phase. So, my goal of this stream is to get through this game. <laughs> or die trying. We'll see. We'll see if my voice holds out. Also, my controller just disconnected. Please. Okay. It's too early to run into technical hiccups. I might need to wire this thing. Yeah, let me go ahead and wire this controller before things get, you know, sweaty. Give me two seconds. barely reaches we're gonna make do anyway I'm not gonna waste any more time Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of murder. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed... I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he never takes someone's life. Never. Nick. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? Swooning? Me? Oh, oh yeah, I do remember feeling faint. Right on. <laughs> Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Huh? Me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you can do better than that. Come on. I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy. You guys should be bowing before me, yeah. Bow before your hero. Let's talk to this dude. Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did. If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> but seriously, Nick. That boat shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Why would spoil the mood, Larry? Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know. But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty... Edgy. I mean, can you really know he's... Telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. But, what I do know is... I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and... who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me? But, but why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? Hmm. Enough with the silent treatment. Nick, 
Why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me, Miles and Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What? Hey, Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Um, um, er, sorry, I kind of forgot. <laughs> okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear this story today and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so, say, so hang in there. It was the very end of third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A class trial? You remember, Larry. Spring end of third grade? The kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with the money for lunch from home. Huh. I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared, with $38 still inside. Oh. Yeah, now that I... Now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. <laughs> I was coming down with a cold, so I'd skip P that day. I was the only one not in class. So, they thought you did it. Yeah. The kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? Who are these kids that put a third grader on trial? So the next day, we held a classroom trial with me as the defendant. That's how trauma starts. I, I didn't do it. Guilty! He did it! Guilty! It was you! Give the money back! You're such a meanie! No one play with him! Just admit it! You did it! You can't hide the truth! You're not gonna play with me anymore! You shouldn't be allowed in the relay race! Give me back my 50 cents I loaned you! Now, Phoenix! You shouldn't t steal people's money! It's not right! Man, the teacher's getting in on this! In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it! Go over and apologize, Phoenix! I... I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad. I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I had done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. He shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed. Amateurs. But Miles? Look at Miles popping off. It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That's why, Your Honor. This boy is innocent. But, but Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say he's sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? Larry with the boy shorts. This is always how it is. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person. Just think about how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. <clears throat> Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were best of the friends. Wow. I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what I want to be, what it meant to be alone. Totally alone, without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah, well... 
I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I had been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So, I took it kind of personally, see? When something smells, it's usually the butts. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my father. A famous defense attorney. Then, a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edward's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicious of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought too. I tried to get in touch with him, I, I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to... I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he'd become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believed in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Whoa. Nick. So, is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yeah. I helped you out because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Oh, Nick. 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 We have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very well may be. First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I guess I can clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. Okay, off to the boat shop. Hey, pal. No long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, huh? Yeah? I got so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. No problem, pal. Thanks to you, we know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may, it's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch me a criminal. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one other thing. No one can go into the woods today. The woods? Where Lotta was camping? The woods are off limits to camping and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad, no one can go in for a while. I guess Lotta's in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Huh. The steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Edgeworth to show up for work. It is so cold in my house and I don't understand why. I, like, the heat should be on. I have an eco thermostat that just automatically adjusts, but it is freezing.
I'm gonna put on a jacket or something. I'll be right back. Pro tip one, always have a jacket in arm's reach. So, off to the boat rental shop. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be a real murderer. <clears throat> I'd know that clearing of the throat anywhere. <laughs> Hello. What might you be doing here? Up for a walk, hmm? Ah, uh, the days of youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grossberg? This is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edward's trial ends tomorrow. Uh, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Edward should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Ho oh, oh. ho. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be, may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think of- What do you think Mr. Grossberg was really doing here anyway? Who knows? Man, dude left without his parrot. It's a little sad. Nobody's home. Hello, hello! Where hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello, hello! I'm not gonna do the eep every single time. I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend off for himself. Hello, hello! Okay. I've been curious about this box the entire time. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number of the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number of the safe? 1228. Let's open it, Nick. I'm sure there isn't any money in here. Oh. But hey, he keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing... The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Ah, oh, boring. Hmm. There's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth? N Nick! Why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says, this is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting onto the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. Huh. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know. But it looks like they're... These are instructors for the caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Huh? Wh what's wrong? Huh? Oh, never mind. What? Tell me. Just when I saw the TV, I remembered. They're showing a Pink Princess special this week. Oh. See, that's why I didn't want to tell you. 
Maybe I can talk to Polly again. Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. You probably shouldn't just kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great. Now the bird's going to hate me. I guess we should go to the Criminal Affairs Department to, um... Show Gumshoe the letter. Because that is pretty incriminating stuff. Of course, Gumshoe's probably trying to find the fugitive. Hmm. Looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gotten back yet. Gumshoe? He won't be coming back today. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. The boat shop caretaker. He shouted something about catching him if it's the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. Alright, well, that's one less thing I have to worry about. You look as grim as always. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You... don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In third grade? Lunch money? Oh, oh right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick. I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth didn't, you know. That trial was the reason uh, Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you'd do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but... I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Man. The facial animations in this game, like, they're so... They're used so impactfully. There's not that many of them. But they're just used so perfectly and immaculately. <laughs> like, the way his eyes just... Like, his soul just dropped right there. Perhaps. Edgeworth, see this letter? Hmm? This came out of the safe in the shack where the boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge on me. Who is that old guy anyway? I... I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant you got declared guilty or something? Nice right. But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So, he was following this letter, then. Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men. Meaning myself and Robert Hammond. It also says, this is your last chance. Last chance. Wait. Maybe. Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. What is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Okay. I also gotta get some sweats on. I'm super sorry, guys. It is freezing in here.
Thank you for the lurk, PBJ. I appreciate it as always. Also, I'm back. Sorry, I had to get some sweats. It's freezing in my house. Let me give you a quick shout out. There we go. All right, back to the game. Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in that elevator together 15 years ago. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long. It felt like forever. The air thinned, and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. <clears throat> I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier. I want to get out. Help. Get us out. Don't shout. You'll just use up more oxygen. That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling. In court, Gianni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused him temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court, and Yogi was found innocent. Huh. But isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these past few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime that you committed? A memory of a murder. I think, I think the co I think the time has come to tell all. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet! I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. We've already done this once, so I'm not gonna... <laughs> I... I can't breathe. You... You're using up my air. Wh what? Stop breathing my air! I'll... I'll stop you! What? Wh what are you... STOP BREATHING MY AIR! NO! FATHER! HE'S ATTACKING MY FATHER! Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from that day in the court or the bailiffs. In a daze, I pick it up. Get away! Get away from my father! Oh! Ah! And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone... It's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. But... But... That's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. Well, what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shout out memories in self-defense. 
Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth, you... you mean... It was me. I was a true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. <clears throat> what are we going to do now, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there is anything we can do, like it or not. There's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe. There is, Nick. There is someone who knows about the DL6. Hey, Edgeworth. Why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny a reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me. And you want me to defend... And you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, Wright, but I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes. The man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter. Any way you look at it. Even though... So, this is where the order of operations of this game kind of breaks the immersion. Yet... He was found innocent. That defense to her attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. <clears throat> On that day, 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered from oxygen deprivation. I lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. Claimed Yanni Yogi had not been of sound mind due to oxygen dep deprivation. Yogi was released due to lack of evidence. Innocent. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher, and a man who deserves respect. I, reserve, I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So, he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He is a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life. He's obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the classes he has taken... In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent. Ever. But, but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does in his... No, is his job. To find the suspect guilty. Perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth? What you're saying's true. You're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right. Now's not the time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm. It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Alright, let's go to Grossberg. I think we're almost done with the investigation. <laughs> Mr. Grossberg. Ah, oh, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding. I can't believe you're not. But my, my, my. Just calm down and tell me what happened, hmm? It's Mr. Edgeworth. He, he... I see. So Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. It's only a dream. 
Only a dream. I wonder. What? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled, hmm? Well, also, consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep, he'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real. As you imagined. Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the deed was done. N no I don't believe it. Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was, irrevo <laughs> was irrevocably wrecked. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course. What do we have here? How are you doing, Trunks? How are you doing? I saw you were playing Final Fantasy earlier. <laughs> well, this was his last chance, of course, with the Statute of Limitations so close. Okay, let's talk to him. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called it on a spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Fay. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. FFX, so yes, it is my second favorite. So I'm 100% with you on that boat. <laughs> I'm actually thinking that I might end up replaying that this year as well. Yet yeah, Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Um, one second. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility nonetheless. What do you know about Edgeworth's father? He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer now, now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fey. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The result? He has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And he lost, and died in despair, as it were. I see. Okay. Oh ho! So this is the letter? It does seem that Yogi was following these, this letter when he killed Mr. Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney. But, he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before. A long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? It's Von Karma. Hmm. Could it be Manfred Von Karma? Von Karma. Why would he have something to do with this? Um, well, I'm not sure. 
Hmm? Von Karma. Von Karma. Wait! You're right, my boy! This is Von Karma's handwriting, and I'm sure of it. I used to see it all the time on court reports. What? But, but, that means... The one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred Von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Ah, she was a beautiful woman. I'm truly sorry about what, sh what I did. Huh? Sorry about what? I think I'll stay out of this one. If it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no. But, but how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm. That I do not know. Yet I do know that Von Karma is persistent. And a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court, and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscathed. What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma. Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory, Ed Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took, a von... he took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. Don't have strange ideas about vacation, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I don't believe the penalty upset him. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. Oof. If he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Von Karma is going to bring up DL6. You can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. I know that. I... I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But Nick... Mr. Edgeworth admits to himself. His father must have tr lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. The police materials, hmm. Alright, we're almost done. Let's go to the detention center. And to the criminal affairs. Why is it so cold in this house? I need gloves, it is so cold right now. Ugh. There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. 
Ah, it's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. He's staying out late for some... Looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check out the court record room again. Well now, I can't just have anyone wandering around in there. But, I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now, anyway. You can go in as long as he's there. Von Karma? Yes, he just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the court record room. N Nick let's hurry! I've got to adjust the heat, like, a hundred percent. But I think this is the last scene here. We'll go ahead and finish. We'll go ahead and finish, and then I'll adjust the heat. Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure that they haven't had the time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't in here. Von Karma. Huh? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says, Unsolved Cases. Evidence. Huh. Unsolved Cases? Nick. The file for DL6. It's completely empty. Wh what What are you doing in here? Huh? B Von Karma. You. How do you know my name? Huh? Have we met? What are you saying? We see each other each day, don't we? We're Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team? <laughs> I beg your pardon. You see, I, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They're like bugs to me. Needless things. To be crushed. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. him. We're just gonna present the letter. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. So you admit it. You, you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You've saved me a lot of needless hassle. What? N Nick, what is that thing? A stun gun for self-defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000... Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it. Usually. No. Give me the letter. No! No! What? what are you... Nick, run! Ah! M Maya! Out of the way! Ah! <laughs> Well, we both just got stun gunned. He got us. The letters gone, of course. And he took the DL6 evidence, all of it, back to having no clues. Wait, Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? Maya! Maya, open your eyes! Maya! The letter. Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah, are you okay? I, I, I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. 
I can't even call my sister. Not even now, when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Maya! Good. There has to be some way I can help her. I better do something about her self-confidence first. Hmm? Maya, she's holding something. What is that? A bullet? DL6 incident. Evidence number seven taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. All right. We are at the finale of this game, finally. Let's go ahead and save. I gotta get some more water. I also have to adjust some settings. It is cold in my house. I will be back in two to three minutes. See you soon.
check something out. That is so weird. Trying to figure out, um, I don't know. When I'm looking at my stream on my phone, my webcam always looks off, but right now it seems to be fine. Maybe I'm stressing out about it when I don't really need to. Anyway, I was just checking it. We're going to jump back into the game. For the final courtroom phase, we are here. Also, I have some spicy food that I put hot sauce on just to heat myself up a little bit. So don't mind me. This is it. Judgment Day. Today, things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. Ugh. What's the big idea? Sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my run-in with the stun gun yesterday. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. Hope Von Karma doesn't push him too hard. Whoa! What are you doing? Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge? Right, good idea. Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out. Won't you have, pal? What's gotten into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How did it go, Detective? Have no fear. As promised, I captured your runaway caretaker. I brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock, I got, I got on the way in. I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. But that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready. <clears throat> oh, right. Very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be awed into silence by every little thing he says. Very well. Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness to the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. <clears throat> he lives in the boat rental shop on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness, why did you run away yesterday? The witness was not running away, as he will now testify. I, I see. Very well. Please begin your testimony. Mm -hmm. He has such a good animation. 
<laughs> I'm really sorry about leaving yesterday like I did. But I wasn't running away or nothing. I, uh, went to buy some food for Polly, see? I figured I got nothing to do with this incident, anyhow. I mean, I need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. Such a blatant lie. Such a blatant lie. Hmm. Very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi, and I'm going to prove it. Uh, okay, we're not going to do this. Him saying that he doesn't have a motive. Eat. Oh, crap. I forgot. Von Karma took it from me. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Er, uh, yep. It seems like it. Then how could you... N how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh... Or... Or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are. <clears throat> the witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. How am I supposed to prove that what's going on in this old codger's head? That's impossible. Hmm. I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edworth and the victim Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now, over and over. You've been calling the witness memory of the past, or, or lack thereof, into question. But does it really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with the case, and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Order! Order! Mr. Wright! There is a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying... Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Ho oh, oh. ho! Now this is interesting. I would like to know myself. So, who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us a witness's name. It's Yanni Yogi. His name is Yanni Yogi. A former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi! From the DL6 incident. It figures the judge would have heard of it. It's, a, it's such a famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, this man is Mr. Yogi. Then he has a clear motive. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness is Yanni Yogi. Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove he's Yogi right here, right now, then I've got nowhere else to go. Nick. How are you going to prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay. It's, 
actually quite simple. Your Honor. Please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare him to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see. That makes sense. Hm. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. But why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? What? No fingerprints? Or you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned my fingerprints working with the stuff, yup. What? Yogi, you sneak! You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Huh. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. No. Well, what do you think, Mr. Wright? Uh... Hmm? It seems that the case has been decided, no? No! I know what happened. I know everything. I... I just can't prove it. But no. I can't let it in like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karma. Wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot. What is it, Nick? No, you're not going to. Your Honor. The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On my proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. Yeah. <laughs> order, order. Uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce. I object. Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. Hmm. Well, if you're so desperate, then please, be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy. Well, don't want to go through with your little game. We're doubling down on this bad decision. Let the parrot take the stand. I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Von Karma's rigged every person's testimony. Every piece of witness. Except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least, I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name! The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. Ahem. <clears throat> Very well. Witness. Who is your owner? Please, uh, testify for us. Hmm. Certainly the most concise testimony we've heard so far. Very well. Begin your cross-examination. Right. What are you going to do, Nick? I... Uh, I don't know. What do we do, Maya? Hmm.
Hello, hello! Well, I guess we should try to get some information out of her. We need to show the judge that her owner is y Mr. Yogi. Witness! You can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. R right uh, what do I say? Have we forgotten something? As I recall, two days ago... Polly, Polly! Have we forgotten something? Don't forget the L6! <laughs> if I can get Polly to say that here, that would prove that the caretaker had something to do with the L6. Um, Polly? Have we forgotten something? Hello, hello! That, that's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot something. Something we forgot. Hello, hello! Uh-oh. It's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't she say it? Something the matter, Mr. Wright? Wait. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parent. The parrot. Could he? Did he train her to not respond when we asked her if she'd forgotten anything? Okay. What's your name? Maybe I should get her to say her name. Polly! Polly, what's your name? Polly! Polly! Mr. Wright, I think we've established that the parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with the owner's identity? Of course it does. Yes, it does. Huh. Fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will prove the owner's identity? Then show us with the proof. Nick, don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Listen, we're not in here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... Okay. So we need to read through this anyway. This is the DL6 case summary. December 28th, 2001. One second. Y'all gotta watch Don't Look Up on Netflix. So funny. Okay, I've heard of it. That's the climate change one with the meteor. I remember. Okay. It was actually on my recommended now that I think about it, but I I literally turn into, like, tune into Netflix once a month, so I don't watch too many things. So, happened in the elevator in the district courthouse. Air in the elevator was oxygen depleted at time of incident. No clues found on the scene. Victim data. Gregory Edgeworth, 35, defense attorney. Trapped in elevator returning from a lost trial with son. Miles Edgeworth, age 9. One bullet found in heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. Suspect data. Yanni Yogi, age 37. Port Bailiff trapped in elevator with Gregory Edgeworths. With the Edgeworths. Memory loss due to oxygen deprivation. After his, ar after his arrest, fiance Polly Jenkins committed suicide. So his fiance, Polly Jenkins, he named his parrot Polly. The DL6 case file? That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is the proof on it then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please show us the page. It's on suspect data. It's on the suspect data page. 
This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide, see? Hmm. Indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly! Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of his fiance who had committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is possible. But a mere con coincidence, that is all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does this make you my granddaughter's fiance? He's only seven years old. Hmm. Indeed. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more, if we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right, but what? Very well, witness. You may continue. Maybe I'll get her to say this number on that safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number on the safe in the shack? 1228. 1228. My, what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number is, has something to do with the caretaker. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Huh. Ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? This piece of evidence is OP. DL6 case. It's on the case summary page. The DL6 case file. What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright. Where in this file is something relating to that safe number? Case summary. It's on the case summary page. The case summary. Specifically, the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident? December 28th? Why, that's today's date. 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. Oh. He used the date of the DL6 incident as a number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date is to him. I see. It's certainly an in interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Ugh. This is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001 because I'm number one. You know, for somebody so smart, that's really dumb. Granted, one of my cards, one of my cards, which it's expired, so I don't even try to do this, was the pin was 000. It was the dumbest thing. I didn't even do that. It just came to me like that. And I was like, man, this card seems defective. <laughs> Like, there's literally a one in a thousand chance of that happening, and you'd think they wouldn't even allow that to happen. This has nothing to do with the date. Nothing. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence. Co coincidence. Ooh, what was that word I just threw up right there? That's all. True. That is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. W what are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately. Witness. Tell us your name. Wait. This witness, he doesn't remember. No. It's okay. This man just, he buffed up all of a sudden. He's like, yo, I'm ready to fight. <laughs> I've accomplished what I've wanted to do. I'm done. 
Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting. For 15 years. W well. Let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. 15 years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Order! Order! Yanni Yogi! So it, so it was you who killed Robert Hammond and tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death. Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. Told me, he told me it would make me innocent. Get me off the hook. So, I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really. But he didn't believe me. We won the trial. But I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my social standing. Then, this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought it was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge? Against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Von Karma, where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then, the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is innocent. In this case, at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for that particular case. So I would like to pass my judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty. That is all. Court is adjourned. Hold it. Objection. Did, did, did someone just say objection? It wasn't Von Karma. Wait. But that means... No. No, no, no. Edward. Your Honor. I object to your judgment. What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick. Edward is trying to confess. He's trying to say he's guilty. He's going to tell them he was a murderer in the DL6 incident. He's going to tell them he killed his own dad. Uh-oh. What do I do? No. I'm sure Edgeworth thought about this one long and hard. This isn't my place to interfere. Nick, are you sure? There's nothing we can do about it. This is his problem now. For 15 years, I have had a recurring dream. 
A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know. It wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean... In the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer. The criminal in the DL6 incident. It was me. Your Honor, I confess to my guilt. I am guilty for DL6. The Statues of Limitations which ends today. The culprit is me. Order. Order. This is certainly unexpected. The defendant, declared innocent, is confessing to a different crime. Crime for which the statute of limitation runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this, but it's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. We tried this man for his crime for 15 years ago. I think, I think I would like to have a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. I'm sorry, Wright. I've just wasted all of your effort. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, sir. I mean, you... kill your dad? I didn't want to believe it myself, Detective. But, it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy! Just crazy! Nick? What are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm gonna prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it. He confessed that he did it. In court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth. But I don't believe your nightmare. Wh what? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove your innocence. Trust me. R right. Now then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge, Miles Edwards has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examining. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. Von Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, I am a prosecution. <clears throat> Miles Edgeworth, I am a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 
Fifteen years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That would be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please, please. <clears throat> Well, I think about this. Wait. I haven't actually been through these yet. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. <clears throat> hmm. And until now, you thought the memory was just a dream? We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in that elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. But, the same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so this one's pretty obvious, actually. So, Edgeworth says there was a single shot, but... The DL6 gun got fired twice, according to the case file. Murder weapons fired twice, victim data. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the gunshot and the scream, then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, Your Honor. Unfortunately, you don't. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence, unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? The only page we haven't used, the victim data. Look at the victim data in this file. It says quite plainly, the murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet, the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So, who fired the remaining shot? I'm getting into it now, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, chat. Hmm. Was there perhaps another shooter who fired the second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before this incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Hmm. I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of these shots was fired by the defendants, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with the case? Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. <clears throat> what? Impossible! Now, now, Mr. Von Karma. Save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show us your proof. This is one I do have memorized. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol 
was related to the incident. It has to do with this shot right here. So, we know from this piece of evidence, one bullet was taken from Gregory Edwards' heart. And let's see. So one was in his heart, but there was a shot that was fired through the door. So there had to be two bullets, one that was lodged and they retrieved as evidence. And then one, then one bullet that went through that window. Look at this photograph. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying here is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves that the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. So let me get this straight. This photo proves two gunshots were fired. Where? Your Honor, please. Please get a clue. It should be obvious. The contradiction is here. I see. A bullet hole in the door. <clears throat> Your Honor. Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet, there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth shot fired the second shot. Order, order. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness, consciousness after the shot he was fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. But Mr. Wright, but who could be that someone else? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 case incident file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary, that's on page one. Look, look at what's written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. The second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made the bullet hole in that door. Also, there's technically not proof that that bullet hole occurred on that day. Order. I will have order. Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice during the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It's highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked this second bullet. So, all we have is a single bullet fired. I'm afraid we have to discount the defense's claims. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Uh, how did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet di didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I... Uh, it... It looks like I was wrong. Nick? If the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. 
No. But you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Mr. Edgeworth declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just... When I saw the photograph, I thought the two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else who could have fired the killing shot. But now... I was wrong to think it would be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick. Well, it seems that we've finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. Hmm. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your father. Though that was not your intentions. Yes. I did. Oh no. He's accepted the guilt. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce the verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There's so many things I know I should be saying. But my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright? Objection. Your Honor. Your Honor, I... I object. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object, hmm? Nick? I... I don't know. This case is perfect. Oh no. Ugh. Oh. It must exist. Second bullet. Wh what? What did you just say? N nothing. The second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce any answers for Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. Hmm? I, uh... Th the second bullet. It, uh... It exists! What? Well, we just heard proof that it did not exist. I... I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It's just... Someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But... Who? The... The, the murderer! The murderer? Then tell us, who was this murderer? I'm still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet. But why? Huh. First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there something... Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for the bullet? Why would the murderer have spent time looking for a stray bullet? <clears throat> I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Uh, um... The murderer had no reason to take the bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Urk had to take it. Had to take it. The murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright? Y yes Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But, uh, the murderer had to take the bullet. Had to? Mr. Wright, what do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance, what? Um, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer? The bullet? 
Hit the murderer? J just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform, perform surgery right there. You know? Wait a second. I was just talking off the tip of my hat. But what if that's really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer himself was shot. And they left with the second bullet inside of them. Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime. Uh, yes. I guess that's how it would work. Yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from the elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean the murderer came from outside. Yes. The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boys the boy picks up the pistol and throws throws it at them. The pistol discharges, and the bullet The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Hmm. Mr. Wright, you are truly most unpredictable defense you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you doing? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murder. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first, and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take the vacation because of shock, but took it because he was injured? Maya just cracked the case. Maya's smarter than Nick. Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma. Oh man, something wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem dazed. You seem a little woozy. Uh, no, your honor. Well, you've indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh. Should I come out and say it now? There's no better time than now. Your Honor, there is one suspect. One lone suspect. Well then, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? B -b 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 My hands are shaking. V what? Von Karma. Von Karma? You mean, the Von Karma? The prosecutor. The one standing right he over there. But You... Don't object? Hm. I, so, I see no need. Why well, honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Got him. Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident. 
Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Ugh. Nick. Let's find out who that doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth? I know Von Karma. Perhaps too well. He's perfect. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. Hmm. Nobody's that perfect. So... So what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere. But where? Hm. Well, Mr. Wright. Can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? All right, Von Karma. I'll prove it. And I'll even use evidence. I know how much you... I know how you like it so much. What? The evidence that proves that Von Karma was shot is... Hmm. I actually got to think about this a little bit. What exactly is that? Er, uh, sorry. Judge, if you would. Right, penalty. I'm really not sure how I managed to make it this far. Okay. Hmm. I was almost positive it was that. What exactly is that? Oh my god, I messed up twice. We're gonna save just in case. I don't wanna redo this. Like, I know the answer, I just don't know exactly what I'm supposed to um, present here. And it's ironic, because this is like one of the last things I had to present as well. Evidence that proves that Von Karma was shot. I'm trying to think through all this evidence. This is different. Yes, it's a very interesting game. It's actually my favorite trilogy of, like, pretty much all video games. Also, how are you doing, Murduck? Let me give you a shout out. Doing good, man. I've been playing this game for a long time. It's a lot of reading. Like, I literally started this in maybe, like, August or September, and I've just been doing it a little bit here and there. But, like, two hours of straight dialogue is a lot, especially for somebody like me. It's just... I love this game. It is rough to stream sometimes, though. But I love it. I love it. Um, So I present the case file. I know it's not the incident photo. I present the DL6 bullet. I think I got a present this just to insinuate that ballistic markings is the way this guy's gonna go down. What exactly is that? No? This is throwing me off. Reading stream, exactly. What the heck is it? I feel like I don't use this until later. It might be I, that I use this here, but we'll see. OK, 
okay. I thought there was like one more step I had to do before this, but this is actually the last step. Okay. Von Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery, leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where is the bullet now? I think it's unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery himself. You, you don't mean. I do. There is the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. Got him. Is, is that even possible? For all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm going to run this over you and see what we find. I refuse. He's breaking. I love this. You, you refuse. But refusing this means... You acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you? Order! 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 Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use this metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitation runs out on this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. Mm. Oh. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to be tested. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. It reacted. Something inside his right shoulder. The bullet. This is so epic. I just love this game so much. <laughs> like, an hour ago, we were cross-examining a parrot. And now we're using a metal detector on a prosecutor to prove that he is freaking guilty. Mr. Von Karma? You. It was you! I was afraid this would happen. And so, I remained silent. Hmm? Indeed. There is a bullet in my shoulder. Got him again. You're right, Trunks. We got him. However, it has nothing to do with this murder. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. But, but, Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove? I have no obligation to prove anything. It is Mr. Wright who must prove something here. Not I. M Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. <laughs> <laughs> Is that so? That's because you took it out of the court record room yesterday. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So, <laughs> so sorry, Mr. Wright. I get a good laugh from this one. No. I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. W what? You were close. One day away from freedom. But you see? I have proof. W what? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. Let's go. That's a bullet. Where did you get that? This is a bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. E Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely 
with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique fingerprint. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets. Then, if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets that were... <laughs> we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol. In other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. Miss mm -hmm. Von Karma? You will let us remove that bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? Uh, uh. <laughs> that scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait. I know. No. I can't breathe. Quiet. I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air. I'll... I'll stop you. Stop breathing my air. Get away. Get away from my father. It's that scream I heard in that elevator. Fifteen years ago. Von Karma, it was you who screamed. Mr. Von Karma. Well, it's one. Only you would dare defy me. So it was you. You and your father are my curse. Your father shaved me with a penalty on my record. And you... You left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade. I'll bury you. I'll bury you with my bare hands. Death. Death. Fifteen years early. Chief Prosecutor. I'm sorry. Von Karma. It's not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. Yeah, dude, this is so intricate. I love, like, this game has been sewing this since case two. We are on case four. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. It was a shock like none I had ever known. Me. Penalized. It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly, I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch back, black. The lights must have gone out. I went out into the hall and felt my way from to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. I was in pain. A horrible, burning pain in my shoulder. Just then, the lights came back on. The elevator opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from the oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then, it was destiny.
In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium, blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. This dude is so stupid, all he had to do was shut up for one more day. But he was so insecure about his perfect record, and he wanted to get Edgeworth found guilty. <laughs> Who would have thought another man would have come to open the elevator door? Judge. W what What are you doing? Do your job. Bring an end to this miserable charade. Now, end it. V very well. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. My boy is innocent. That is all. This court is adjourned. So, Trunks, I don't know if you got it, but Edgeworth, like the prosecutor that was on stand, Von Karma was his mentor. Like, Von Karma killed his father, killed his father in cold blood, and then he adopted Edgeworth as his son. Nick, Nick, we did it. Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick. Crushed. I gotta say, I'm impressed. <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. I know. I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now it's all just a good memory. So it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah? I... I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know. Try. Thank you. I... I see. Thank you, Wright. You're welcome. I think you could have done better than that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She's got you there. Whoop! Amazing, pal! You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. Yeah, my salary went down a little bit this month. Who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth? You should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Hmm. I... I see. Hmm. <laughs> Whoop! I... I feel foolish. Don't worry. Take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this... unguarded. Hey, y'all! Lada! Y'all were great in there! Thank you! Yo, Edgeworth! Congrats! Er... Thank y'all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if there no one was there. You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lotta? Who, me? Uh, I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? 
<laughs> it's over, Nick. My life's over. Well, why the sad face, Larry? What's happened now? Oh, Nick. I'm not long for this world. You don't look sick. It's Keyonce. She's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick? She's leaving me behind. Could have seen that coming. Yo, Wedgie. There you are. Um, yes. Here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here. A little gift from me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Butts! You come along tonight, too. My treat, pal. Huh? Uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick! That's a suit... That's a suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Right? Uh, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah? What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me. It's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? Huh? What a weird amount. I mean, it's not little, but it's not a lot either. $38 exactly? N Nick? Wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38. No. No, I'll kill it myself! Larry, it was you! What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent from school that day, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day, 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came to school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there. And the rest is history. I never was good at history, huh? Edgeworth? You didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right. You may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really, right? I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth? Hmm? You should have told me! Now, now, Nick. It was 15 years ago. Don't you think Statues of Limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it. Huh? Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you did. Well, you have always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. Yeah, and you get worked up too easily, too. D death! The sentence to for both of you! Man, if only I had known, I'd have become a prosecutor! The same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor to part in part to punish myself. My leg has fallen asleep so hard in the past couple of minutes. If I had known the truth, I might have become I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. Wanna switch right? Hey y'all! Line up, I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time, let's go. And after that, dinner on me. Detective Gumshoe took us on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom, even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention.
Whoa. I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? It's still only five. I should be going back to sleep. Hmm? What's this? A letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you... It made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium. In training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. But I couldn't. I was useless. So I've decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged full spirit medium, for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. G goodbye What time is it? Ugh! The first trains for the mountains have already left. To the station! I guess I'm too late. Hey! Nick! Maya! So, you're leaving. Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Hold it! Hold it. W wait! What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes. Only her voice. But still. It was at the very end when I thought I'd lost ev we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I, I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. Evidence? Show Maya some evidence to cheer up. That bullet. The one she took the taser for? The one she jumped in front of me for? Last, ev last piece of evidence that I presented? That's all on her. A bullet? Von Karma wasn't convinced he had taken all... Uh, let's restart that one. Von Karma was convinced he had taken all of the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence that we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. So, this is it. See you soon, Maya. Thanks, Nick. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page and say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I was once was. Now a new story begins with the same old crazy cast of characters. <laughs> Don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim. Er, yes, your honor. Uh-oh. Got a bad feeling about this. pal. Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me a happy new year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Then he hung his head low and went right back to the office. 
Kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? <clears throat> huh? Nick? Haven't seen him lately. Who, me? I've been working at a cheese shop. Miss Missy's a nice lady, but not exactly what you call a cheap date. Huh? Oh yeah, she's a, right now in Hawaii. Thank you, Trunks. Thank you for sticking around, too. Who? Right? Yeah, I remember him. I hear he's been busy lately. You know, not to ring my own bell. I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. Hmm. Yeah, man. Technically, there's one more trial, but... Until this game was re-released, I'll explain it after this credit. Phoenix writes. Hmm. Oh. The defense attorney for whom I wrote that affidavit for. Oh, you should know I've taken over management of the Gatewater Hotel. Should you be in the area, please stop by. But this game originally came out on Game Boy Advance. And when they ported it to the DS, they added a new trial. But that new trial is literally as long as the rest of the game. I'm just not going to do that right now. <laughs> hmm. Oh, it's you. Phoenix Wright. Ah, yes, my his understudy, was he not? I wonder how he's doing. I haven't seen him as, as of late. Oh. Days of my youth, like the fresh scent of lemon, you see. But man, this is one of my favorite games of all time. Like, very hard game to stream. Probably the hardest game I've streamed. As far as, like, making it entertaining and stuff, but... Phoenix Wright, is he an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star with a name like Phoenix. Oh, this is your girlfriend. You remember old bag, Miss Wendy. I'm pleased to announce the Pink Princess is a hit. I'm sure I owe Mr. Wright a great deal. I think I'm gonna keep my face out of public. I wouldn't want to ruin any kid's dreams, you know? So he was a steel samurai in case three, but they canceled it after that case and rebooted his pink princess and he plays a pink princess so oh i got a letter from maya the other day sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall i wanted to visit but didn't have time so i sent her some pink princess trading cards she says she can't buy them where she is what kind of place is she living at anyway Right? Who's that? You want to talk? Let's talk Pink Princess, all right. But you know, I snuck into the studio the other day and I saw her, the one inside the Pink Princess suit. Oh, what a dog. It was kind of a shock for my boy, of, for a boy of tender age. Yeah. I remember right. That lawyer guy, huh? Me? I'm training to become a paranormal photographer. You know the picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real. Now that's talent. I'm gonna go be famous. Victory. And there's Mia, Maya, Larry, Phoenix, Edgeworth, Gumshoe, the entire cast. And that is my first ongoing series, Wanna Be Right. There is a DLC episode. We are not gonna do that. Not yet, at least. I might do it one day, but not today. But thank you for um, tuning in. It was a pleasure. I had a lot of fun doing this. So, you know, it was a long time coming, but we made it all the way to the end. Now, we're going to raid out to somebody. Let me check my friends list to um, see who's available. But before I go, I just want to thank everybody who was here. I want to thank PBJ. Stopped in with the lurk early. 
Um, Trunks was here for a good portion of the stream. And Murdoch, who um, chilled out for a little bit as well. All three of them are streamers. Um, let's see. There are only two viewers, so I'm not going to bother with the shout-outs, to be perfectly honest. It's okay. I'm pretty sure you guys all know each other anyway. But anyway, let's go ahead and raid out. I hope you guys have a good evening. Take care, and I hope to see you soon. I have another narrative game planned, one where I won't have to talk.